The Noosa River catchment is rated A plus for water quality and habitat. Therefore, it should be a thriving environment full of Australian bass and mullet, yet it's not. Now, some of you may be aware that it was during the 80s. So why are the fish now disappearing? In the 90s, a new industry emerged in the catchment of Noosa, macadamia nuts. State government departments researched the best ways to grow the nuts and protect them from pest insects and diseases like fungus. They recommended targeted spraying of the trees with a range of chemicals to achieve maximum yield. These included organophosphate pesticides, labelled as supercide fungicides, such as carbendism and copper, plus insecticides such as bulldog, which is a synthetic pyrethroid. Now it's worth noting that all these chemicals are registered for use on macadamias and many other crops by the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority. Now they do not test the chemicals for safety on fish larvae. The use of the aforementioned chemicals is overseen by state chemical use legislation. They come with strict guidelines for use and farmers must record their use in a logbook. To a certain degree, this all sounds thorough and safe. Well, why does a farmer spray on a day such as this when it is observed that variable winds are blowing? As you can see, this macadamia plantation directly neighbours an established, and until recent times, productive fish hatchery. The direction of the wind seen here by the smoke trail is coming from the plantation to the fish ponds. I don't know if the smoke will show up on the um, camera, but they're spraying from behind the fire. Perhaps the farmer lit a fire on the far side of his property and logs the wind as blowing away from the fish hatchery and therefore favourable conditions for spraying. However, at the ponds, due to swirling wind conditions, the direction is in fact coming from the farm and would carry spray drift to the hatchery. That's, that smoke is going now. There's my shed's Direct coming straight you. over my hatchery. Look at it all. Yeah, the wet grass is doing it. Now the DPI clearly told us that cannot use these dangerous chemicals and not affect my fish. It's funny how the winds are strange down here. And yet he no. says nothing is... I know. In line of their bloody spray. Yeah, I know it's absolutely perfect in line. That's and yet after constant phone calls and letters the regulators take no action against the farmer spraying process. Now remember the chemicals used to spray the macadamias have never been tested on fish larvae. If they are safe to use, why are the fish larvae looking like this? There you can see his two heads fairly clearly. As a result, Successful breeding is no longer possible from Noosa River wild bass stock. I guess he can't really live. It's, it's just amazing that it's even hatched. That's the second head there. That seems to be the main head. One of the chemicals in use, carbendism, aka benoil, was removed from registration in the USA in 2001 due to concerns over reproductive impacts on humans. It is scientifically proven to cause deformed embryos in frogs. It could well be the cause of bass deformities. So why are we still using it in Australia? This is the larvae spawned from wild Noosa River bass in the hatchery that borders the macadamia farm. Now for the past few years there have been unexplained mortalities and deformities in the adult and larval fish. 90% of all larva spawned from the wild bass this year were deformed and died within 48 hours. This suggests all affected wild fish will not be able to breed. Now the adult fish appear to look outwardly normal, but their eggs are damaged and cell development is totally messed up by chemicals. Interestingly, bass from outside the Noosa catchment were spawned in exactly the same hatchery one week later and were normal. This strongly suggests the fish were contaminated whilst living in the upper reaches of the Noosa River. Fact. Noosa River commercial fishermen report a 95% plus drop in incidental bass capture and a 100% decline in golden eye mullet over the past 10 to 12 years alone. These species of fish spend a great part of their life in the freshwater creeks which are now flanked by macadamia agriculture. Aquatic animals are acutely sensitive to all the chemicals being used at well below one part per million concentrations. Current spray regulations do not protect aquatic life from drift and runoff. 
Macadamia farmers only spray in spring and summer, which coincides with when freshwater fish are trying to breed. If it is so safe, why are deformed larvae appearing? And why have these discoveries coincided with the recent introduction of macadamia spraying? One time a batch of larvae bred at the hatchery were convulsing with obvious nerve poisoning, which is consistent with organophosphate exposure. An antidote, atropine, was then administered and as a result, the larvae survived. An expert independent aquatic veterinarian has identified the most likely source to the deformities as chemical spray drift and runoff. Take action, have it stopped. Take note of the list now on screen and demand that these chemicals be reviewed for their safety on fish larvae. Demand tighter regulation for spray operators. Demand a stop to sprays damaging the aquatic environment. Demand an end to the chemical spray drift and runoff killing the noosa fish stocks. Or email the local shire councillors and raise the question. Take action. Have it stopped.